I'm Simon Carney from Click to View, and I'm here with Stephen Ballantyne, who um, has one of the most fascinating jobs in the world. He manages and supports remote location shooting uh, for you know for basically the best of the best, National Geographic, all of these great uh, great producers of wildlife and um, and remote uh, remote um, you know documentaries and so forth. Stephen, maybe uh, introduce yourself a little bit. And then we can talk about um, the issue of the moment, which is how do you do these shoots safely in the time of COVID-19? Yeah, Simon, it's really good to see you. Yes, uh, EPM Asia is my company, and we've been running remote locations for the past 15 years. Uh, I'm based in Hong Kong, um, but we have offices in Shanghai and the Philippines. And we, yeah, exactly as you said, we run remote locations for some of the the top commission broadcasters across Pacific and Central Asia and China. Excellent. So what do you, what's you now I understand you're coming up with a plan um, for to enable safe remote location shooting. Can you tell us a little bit about that and how it works? Yeah, this has come up because a lot of our production partners, both in the US and the UK, have expressed concerns about returning into remote locations where particularly when we're working with a tribe or remote community. And so the great fear is that, you know, from our Western perspective, we could be taking in a virus into a, a relatively safe zone, which then couldn't be supported. That we have taken seriously, actually, well before COVID-19. You know, any remote location could bring an infection that is unwarranted and, and could not be supported. So it's something that we've always considered in the risk assessments that we've had in place. Now it's even more paramount that we are 100% are certain that the crew that we take into these environments are not carrying the virus. And so part of our initiative and this is still very much work in progress um because we're still very at the beginning i'm afraid i think from our perspective is that we are looking at programs that we can present to local governments so for example we work a lot in fiji and papua new guinea and we have very very strong connections at government level in order to work with the production companies we take there we have already started conversations uh, with the immigration for example at papua new guinea to look at what the requirements they will need in order to support a film crew going in now this might mean regular testing prior to travel up to two months prior to travel and then just prior to actually going into country. We don't see the certificate program as being beneficial at the moment. So for example, in China, our colleagues there have a app which basically shows that for a seven day period, they are not carrying the virus. And so that allows them to travel, which is, means that we can now continue filming all over China for some of our working partners who can't travel into China. So these apps may well be universal in, in the coming months. Uh, a certificate program, I think, is a very difficult one to manage because once you've had the, uh, the, the, the test at the moment, you still don't know if you're not picking it up two or three days later. So the regular, regularity of that is, is, is not practical for a lot of production companies and would be very expensive. You so, can imagine, that would be, I mean, that, that's a lot of tests. It is a lot of tests. So there's certain conversations going on that maybe we don't go to these remote locations until there is a vaccine. Uh, and so, which we would agree, um, potentially that may well be the way forward. However, by not going to countries like Papua New Guinea, Fiji, Trobian Islands, all over where we were, particularly with the Philippines as well, it's a lot of revenue being lost to the communities that we then work with. So we're trying to balance these discussions that we're having at local level, i.e. with the National Film Association in Papua New Guinea, with the Film Bureau in the Philippines, uh, the Film Bureau again in the Fiji. We're looking at getting everybody's perspective right now to be able to present to our working partners a best way forward. How how difficult is this process to um to, to, to find a to find a solution here? Are the um are the the, the government's um, concerned being helpful and um and helping facilitate that? Yeah, we because of the relationship we've built over fifteen years, we've, we, this has been taken very seriously. Places like Fiji, for example, and also the Philippines closed down very very quickly. You know, I was actually 
at the airport in Port Moresby flying to Fiji uh, to, t to set up a shoot, literally when the order came through and I wasn't even allowed to board the plane, which left me utterly stranded. So then I tried to get into the Philippines and then couldn't then get there. And then that's, yeah, it was a real pickle. But, you know, this it is being taken very seriously. The film industry is a big part of income for many, many countries. And of course, when we make films in these countries, it attracts tourism. So the the, the link between our production work and the, the knock-on effect, i.e. tourism and the additional income that comes in, is taken very seriously. And working at the levels that we do, no one has an answer right now. And that's what we want to make clear. We're exploring potential opportunities because we will start seeing countries opening their doors soon. Now, much like China, it may well be the country goes out of lockdown and we can film there successfully for on behalf of of production companies doing remote location filming for example where we actually have a, a feed where a director or producer can actually see what we're filming is becoming very popular here in Hong Kong and we're adopting that very very seriously so we might be able to take techniques where people don't actually have to travel we take the film crew from local sources or from a trusted source so for example in hong kong we can get tested pretty pretty regularly it's inexpensive and it's pretty fast to get returns film shoots may well be much shorter we may capture footage within a seven day period of one set of one set testing it's so there's there's loads of conversations going i was going to say that's i was going to ask you about um there's, you just raised a whole bunch of questions in my head firstly um you know uh, like uh, Production schedules are going to be aligned with with incubation periods, um, yeah. and also just um, and this, this this sort of like bringing in the the off uh, the online um, contribution. So like having a director's feed, for instance, um, that's also very interesting. And I was going to ask, how do you what what has changed on location? Say in places like China, where you've got people who are who are back to work with this certificate program, but how is the how is the actual on on location experience changed in this current scenario? I'm not sure it has changed. I think it's just been adapted and adopted. You know, I think we've seen a great success in that, where people can actually, you know, we can zoom in and uh, and they can see exactly what's being filmed. They can get clear direction. Um, or you know we they trust what we are film, showing filming for them. Now it has its restrictions, of course it does. It, do, it doesn't have the same energy. So you always now need someone like, for example, like myself. I now take on a director's role, listening to what's being said to us in the UK or from the US, and giving that direction to the team on on the ground. So it's adapting skills. Actually, I think that's what we've seen most of. It's actually growing in our roles, not just as a fixer or location producer, but actually taking on direction roles, working closely with our partners in the other countries. Uh, using these live feeds, you know, it, it has its restrictions, but they are very beneficial and, are, and actually are being used widely. That's, um, yeah, that's fascinating. What about um, uh, like subjects, if, the, if the, the subject is a person, are they, do they, if in China, do they have to have a certificate as well to, to be on, on location, on, on, on the set? Yes, everybody does. Everybody does. You know, anybody meeting each other in one of these, if we're setting up a film shoot, has to have proof that on my last test, they don't have COVID-19. That, And I think, I said this to a production that we're working on at the moment, you know, in Asia, we are learning to live with the virus. We never take our masks off when out in the street. We're constantly sanitizing our hands. And I think that's the stress that we've found by watching news about our friends in the UK, in Europe, in, in America, where people are still saying they want liberty and rights and going out not wearing a mask. The fact is here in, in Hong Kong, particularly, and in China, everybody wears a mask. No one goes out without it. And so we have very few numbers. And adopting those basic principles will be with us we think for at least eighteen months. Yeah, I, I, I tend to agree with you, and and this, um, with what you know, would be considered an invasion of privacy. Having an app, for instance, that uh, certifies you're able to walk around, but I suspect a lot of people would would um, would would take that and be able to walk around. <laughs> I think so. You know, I th it depends what you want from from your future. You know, if we don't have a vaccine within the next 18 months, 
we are we are going to have to wait, find a way to live successfully with this. If that means le- losing a sense of our privacy, for example, an element of it, then then in my perspective, that is worth it in order to protect the community, and particularly when we're talking about remote locations as well. You know, we can you know I we can't afford to take this virus into some of the areas where we film, and we go very very remote. We go to some of the remotest parts of of Mongolia, you know, it just would destroy a community. You know, we've 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 helped our partners out in, in Papua New Guinea, for example, who have no medical care, no medical support, by literally sending bundles of masks. So, you know, it's a small step, but it's one step. It's something to help. And I think that's what we're going to see more of, where we help prepare the locations in advance as well. All right, so a lot more work for you as well. But, um, you know, the safety is a priority, of course. It, it is. I think, you know, you know, part of my job is to deal with the legalities and the safeties of all shoots. And, you know, this has now added a brand new level. So, you know, talking to our, our production insurers here in Hong Kong, we had a conversation with them on Friday, and we are looking at potential policies. So, for example, Thailand already asked that you have COVID-19 insurance in place before traveling into the country. Wow. No one knows what that means. No one knows who can provide this. No one knows what does it actually cover. So, you know, it's it's okay countries are asking for things because they're grabbing at straws. And it just means that people can't travel there. But in the near future, we, we will possibly see insurance policies that give us some kind of insurance against bringing COVID-19 into a country or the medical care that you will require if you carry it in and then infect other people. How you how you prove that is is going to be extremely difficult. So the legalities of working in countries, particularly remote locations, will become a lot more complicated. And I think the application processes, particularly in the next two years, will be a lot more in depth rather than just filling out a couple of names. You know, we we, we travel with a lot of history with EPM that we've been working most of our countries for about fifteen years, and so it's it's this trust that we will that we will not put anybody at risk as far as reasonably possible is is the main frame to what we're building on here absolutely that's um that's uh, very interesting one of the uh, i guess a uh, final question what are, what are some of the other aspects on 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 shoot on location if you're sort of speaking to a production audience that have become um able to do on online apart from the director so in what way sorry what uh what what other aspects for um uh for on location shooting have you been able to shift online from say right. somebody physically being there to now they're they're dialing in i think it's all gone online you know we are still filming and i think we we, we have been very lucky here in hong kong and 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 now china now it's open again so the whole production is run by online connections by 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 WhatsApp, by Zoom, by messaging, you know, the whole production is, is now run virtually. Yeah. So I don't leave Hong Kong, but I still produce and direct with the team in Hong in China via a producer in the UK, for example. So it gets pretty complicated. But actually, once you fall into the rhythm of doing that, it's like having a person next to you, and it's actually saved a huge amount of money. That's it's, it's 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 interesting. I'd be curious to see. I think down the track, probably worth another d- discussion, um, how our communication styles have changed and 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 so forth. But it's it's quite interesting. I th- it's, it's, do you know? And the biggest interest is, is is perceptions on roles because people need things to happen very quickly. You know, you're no longer seen as just being a fixer, for example. It, you are actually seeing it in a in a capacity where you can actually produce a whole show. And we've actually adopted our own business to actually to manage other styles of filming, such as commercial shoots, which we can do very successfully here without, without anybody traveling into the country. Really, that's fascinating. Yeah. Well, um, Stephen, thank you very much for spending the time with us today. Uh, good luck, stay safe, and um, I hope to uh, um, speak to you again sometime in the future just to, just to see how you're getting on with all this. Simon, thank you so much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.